Hi, Dan. Thank you for coming over today. We're very excited to talk to you about some of the amazing work that we're doing together. Oh, thank you. It's great to be here. I look forward to the conversation. Could you tell us a little bit about your work and the research that's cu currently going on in the Anderson lab? Sure. So, you know, one of the things we're really excited about is messenger RNA as a potential drug. And this is something that we've been working closely with Sanofi on. Messenger RNA is, you know, a really exciting tool to treat different diseases. And I think many people know about messenger RNA as a way to make new vaccines. But we see a future where messenger RNA could be used for vaccines for things that we can't treat today, for genetic diseases, and even potentially for genome editing where you could repair the DNA of a patient. We think it's going to be possible to deliver genetic information inside of cells to treat disease. And so when you can do that, you could potentially turn genes on, you could turn genes off, you could even permanently change genes and all of the steps uh, in achieving this require the ability to deliver messenger RNA inside of the cells and patients. That's why we're excited by this. So, uh, you know, I realized that Sanofi is, is very interested in RNA therapeutics and has made a big, big commitment to this area. You know, from your perspective, what are the most exciting areas of messenger RNA therapy? At Sanofi, um, the patients are at the forefront of all the innovations that we embark upon. So we are looking at broad areas of application for RNA, whether it be diseases, as you mentioned, like, you know, genetic disorders or rare diseases that were previously untreatable or had therapies or treatments that were not efficacious. We're looking at mRNA therapies where we can further improve, not just like alleviate some of the symptoms, but go right into the root cause of understanding uh, a treatment that can address the genetics behind what causes that disease. So Dan, where do you think this technology is going to go in the next five or say even 10 years from now? Well, I think it's it's moving in many directions. I think in the near term, we're going to have new vaccines for 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 diseases, some of which, you know, we've already seen before, but but will actually work better. I think further out, I'm hopeful we'll get new vaccines to completely uh, untreated diseases and, and, and even vaccines that may be able to address things like cancer. Um, on top of that, you know, as I mentioned, we think messenger RNA can treat things like genetic disease where there really isn't a therapy for patients today. And then finally, I think further out, we think these technologies could actually even allow us to repair DNA in a way that could, you know, really change medicine. So Dan, to close out our conversation, why, why do you believe collaborations are important? And what are your thoughts on this new intersection that we, that we find ourselves at between biopharma and academic research labs? I mean, I think it really is a, a great way to develop technologies for new areas of science. And I guess as I see it, universities are really great environments for early stage innovation. We get these incredibly smart kids and we give them resources and freedom and guidance and they're able to sometimes come up with new technologies that people had thought of before. But you know what we're not equipped to do is really take some of those later steps. How do we actually make enough of this to treat people? How do we you know, take what is a promising technology and, and actually make a drug? This is where we need help from pharmaceutical companies and experts. And that's why you know, I feel partnerships between academia and, and pharmaceutical companies really can be uh, tremendously powerful.